Welcome everyone to a water box build. The last time we did one of these was a couple of years ago and it was into a prototype for Arterial. And this that we're going to be building into today is the Arterial dual 560 millimeter radiator water box. There's also a 360 millimeter version. And this fits up to 85 millimeter thick 560 millimeter radiators. So that's the Alpha Cool Nexus Monster 560, two of them with push-pull fans. So 16 140 millimeter fans, dual D5 pumps, an integrated distribution plate. And we did the distro, it's not just for aesthetics, it was so that we would have more space for radiators because distros can save a lot of space if they're done right. So if you're not installing a traditional pump res combo, there's a lot less space needed in between the radiators. Because these radiators with push-pull fans are 135 millimeters thick, so that's 270 millimeters of radiators and fans. So you can see here that we've already done the custom cables for all of the fans. This is a part of custom cables that I have always believed is extremely critical. Like there's absolutely nothing else that you can do with your fan wires. If you start tying them up in bundles, it looks like an absolute mess. So I think it's really important to get your cable lengths exactly the length that you need for your fans and it, if you do it all externally run it to a hub people keep asking me about this so I keep talking about it you can do it all outside of the system so that it's not difficult and then later you can just plug the one cable in that you're going to run to your controller whether it's your motherboard or some other controller and you can see that I already have those cables connected just because it's going to be difficult to access those hubs so you can remove all of the panels separately from Arterial and install the panels onto the radiators, which makes things a lot easier. And just for the sake of the video, I have Arterial vertical, but it's actually easier to do it if you just flip it horizontal and then you can just kind of drop the panel and the radiator down onto it and then bolt it on without having to actually hold anything together. So as far as I know, water boxes became popular back in the earlier days of liquid cooling when there were no or very few cases that supported liquid cooling because it's an external liquid cooling system obviously and usually for the fans radiators pump and reservoir so this gets all of the very bulky components for liquid cooling out of the case but there are other benefits to them like you can run them in another room away from the computer get the heat and the noise away and just run long tubes you can have a really tiny compact case like if you want to have an SFF build that's really high end but still have excellent cooling, you know, you can then have a very high end water box that's completely separate, like you just put it away somewhere under a desk where you can't even see it. You can have so much radiator capacity that you can run multiple systems, like two or three systems, or you can just run the fans extremely quiet. So I never actually show it, but just like with any system, the majority of the time goes into the custom cables. So if you're going to do custom cables, cutting everything down to length, sleeving everything, definitely I would say like 80, 90% of the actual time that you're going to put into the entire build will be going into just the cables. And you know, it was certainly that way for this, like the part that I'm doing now, just connecting up the fittings and the tubes. I, I don't remember exactly how long it took for this, but it was a fraction of the time that went into doing all of those fan cables and connecting everything up to the Aquero. Because Aquero configs are a little complex, like it's not just a hub, there's a lot of other things, temp sensors, and for this we also have a, a flow meter, you know, the, the pumps need to go into it, the, all of the fans, but we're just running two big hubs like one for each set of fans on each radiator, which is eight each radiator. And then they're going into separate PWM connections on the Aquero. And then the two pumps are also on separate PWM connections. So I couldn't actually show a lot of the loop building with this because my hands were just in the way the entire time. You just couldn't see what I was doing because it's pretty tight down there with these massive radiators and push-pull fans. And you know, it was it's a little bit tight, when building with this because this is like the absolute maximum end of what it was designed for so if you're not doing push pull if you're just doing a single set of fans or using thinner radiators it's a lot easier you can see a lot more in there you can also do a bit more you can install an sfx power supply traditional pump res combos you know you can you can fit things in there if you don't go for the max radiator capacity 
So you can see filling the loop now and I'm just running like a bypass because this is not connected to any system. So it's just a loop that goes out of the outlet and back into the inlet. And there wasn't really a need to test this completely like this. Like I could have just pressure tested it and shipped it to the customer, but I still wanted to, you know, properly test it with coolant to just make sure that everything works properly to set up the fan and pump RPM curves, particularly the pump RPM curves and, you know, run everything properly with the Aquero. That is some power. Yeah. I always tell everyone else to run one pump while you're filling because of this. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> this exact reason. Yeah, it's out of control. You can't keep up. Because it would go nice and slow and you'd be able to actually get fluid into it as you go. Yeah. But with both pumps you do have to do what you're doing when you fill it up. Run it for like a second. Stop it. Fill it up again. Yeah, it takes longer. But if I try to disconnect one pump, it's going to like yeah. disconnect everything, all the RGB. And then the only way you can get it back on is by removing the bottom panel. <laughs> so it's even more effort to disconnect it at this point. It's just like an explosion, eh? <laughs> it just gets to a certain point and it just gains traction on the fluid and then boom. see one fan that's not working this one. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's not spinning. It's only one. That's pretty good then. Yeah. One of 16. The only problem is it's on the tube side, so we can't get there. A few important things to consider about water boxes, you obviously need an inlet outlet tube from your system. So in your system you need to run the loop to a certain point where you can then run the tubes for the water box. Now a lot of older cases used to have pass-throughs for this, like all of the case labs cases had them, but I'm not really seeing them as much anymore. But you can get expansion slot pass-throughs and that's what the customer is going to be using for this system. It's a really nice clean way of doing it and it's a nice place to have the tubes just coming straight out the back where all of the cables are coming out. You need to have quick disconnects, it's just going to make things a lot easier and you should have them on both sides, at the system and at the water box. And that means that you don't need to have a drain in the system or in the water box because depending on how you've set it up you can just buy one extra either male or female quick disconnect and you connect with a, a compression fitting some soft tube to that and you can just plug in the quick disconnect like after you've unplugged the tubes and just drain from the water box side and from the system side so yeah no need to have a drain for either of them now you do have to consider how you're going to power the water box you can use like some sort of external power supply you can install an SFF power supply into the water box so that everything is completely separate from your system in terms of power but then you need to think about how you're going to start the water box when you start the system. And then you can do like relays and it all gets really complicated or you can just manually do it. But for this, we're just running power back to the system. So really important to have proper RPM management for something like this where you have this many fans where it's all dedicated to cooling. So something like the Aquero where 
you don't need to keep a cable connected for the Aquero all of the time. You can just connect the USB cable to your computer just to configure the Aquero. Once it's configured, you disconnect it, it remembers the settings and just runs everything on its own. But you need to keep that USB cable connected for a few days if you haven't had much experience with setting up RPM curves because there is a sweet spot for RPM curves and you need to spend some time on finding where that is. It's completely different for pumps and fans. Like I wouldn't run pumps under 50% Certainly not for something like this where you're going to have some potentially long tubes, maybe multiple systems. But anyway, there's a lot of fiddling around that you can do there to find the sweet spot between performance and noise. But temp sensors, we have an ambient, we have a coolant temp sensor. The RPMs for the pumps and fans are controlled by the coolant temperature, which is the way that it should be. A quick shout out for the customer who this is going to, I'll put a link in the video description to his Instagram.